What I've done is I've covered the cake in a crumb coat of buttercream. It's a basic buttercream and the recipe's on my website for you. We'll put a link down below so you can get that. And I've got nice straight edges using a side scraper. The cake itself is mounted on an eight inch cake drum. Now that's the same size as the cake itself. So you can then use your scraper and press it against the drum and create that lovely straight edge. There's so much to show you in this DVD that that was not on the list. It then needs to fridge down and get nice and cold for at least an hour. So you can see that I can put my hands on there quite happily. But we need to make it tacky so that our sugar paste will stick to it. Otherwise, it's just going to come straight off. So we do that just by brushing the surface with a little bit of cool boiled water. Once your cake is completely covered and ready for the icing, top tip, move it out of the way and check that you haven't got any water on the work surface. Because if there's one thing that sugar paste fondant icing hates, it's moisture. So I can see that I've got some down here, so we're gonna have a quick clean up. Completely dry work surface is required for this job. Also, Anything on your wrists, take them off. Watches, bracelets, any rings that you can remove, get them out of the way. We're working with sugar paste icing today. You can get this in any supermarket and there are loads of really great professional quality ones on the market. To cover an eight inch cake, you're gonna need about a kilo of sugar paste. The good thing about using a professional quality sugar paste is that you won't need to use as much. So I've got about a kilo here to cover a eight inch cake. I'm working with corn flour because it's less sticky on my hands. It is worth pointing out that if you are using marzipan on your cake, if you have a marzipan covered cake, do not use corn flour because um, it's it's not sterile, you need to use icing sugar. Uh, there's many disgusting reasons for that, so just trust me on that. If you've used marzipan, you need to use icing sugar. First job is to knead the sugar paste so that it's malleable. And all I'm doing is pushing the heat from my hands into the paste to warm it up. What you should start to feel happening is that the paste will become, it'll become springy underneath your hands, it becomes very smooth and you'll be able to see the difference as well. That's what you're looking for. Also by kneading round in a little ball like I'm doing and keeping it all in one place, I'm going to end up with a really nice round shape when I roll out the paste. and all of your creases are going to be on one side. When you flip it over, you've got a lovely smooth surface to roll out. Corn flour down on the work surface so we don't get stuck. And then I'm going to use a couple of bits of kit. We've got marzipan spacers. That's just going to give us a nice even roll out. And a non-stick rolling pin. Getting a good non-stick rolling pin is really going to be something invaluable for your, your cake decorating kit. You're going to find this gets a lot of use. So a little bit of corn flour just on the top so we don't stick and then start to roll out the icing. Once you've given it a few rolls, just give it a twist and go again. And this is going to keep that nice round shape Top tip for turning the paste as well, if you pull it, it'll stretch out and you'll end up with a really random shape. If you turn it round by sliding your hands underneath, you're going to keep it into that nice shape that we want.
This is one of the reasons I told you to take your watch and your bracelet off. When I roll, I use all of my arms, so I don't just use my hands, I use my wrists and my forearms too. It makes it a much easier job. Once you get to the point where you can feel the spaces underneath your rolling pin, you've got to the thickness that these set out for you. If you're not confident in covering a cake with icing, stick here, don't go any thinner than this. But to get a very nice crisp top edge, we want to go a little thinner and you can do this with a professional paste. So I'm going rogue. Okay, I've got a nice roll out on my icing. It's fairly thin, which I'm happy with. I don't want it to be too thick. I'm now going to get it on the cake. Now you'd get this straight on, don't go talking to camera while you're doing it, because all the time that you've spent rolling this out, it will start to dry. The way that I get my icing onto my cake is using my forearms. So I slide my hands underneath, then my second hand, and support the icing on my forearms. I'm then just gonna lift it and drop it on the cake. The minute the icing hits the cake is to secure the top edges with your hand. So stroke the top of the cake, push any bubbles of air out, and just run this nice chubby bit of your hand along the top edge. You'll be noticing now that we've got pleats happening, we've got folds happening in the icing, we've got bits where it looks like it's too short. I promise you this will all be absolutely fine and I'm going to show you how to get the cake completely perfectly covered. So once the top edge is secured you can start working down the sides where you notice that there are pleats happening, all you're going to do is treat them as if they were fabric. So just open them out and smooth them. So I'm going to open and smooth. And top tip, always smooth upwards. So the reason I do it like this is because if you think about it like when you're looking after your skin, you'd never pull down on your skin, you always smooth upwards. It's the same with cake. Where you do notice short bits is where we only, this is the only time we ever smooth down. Once you've been all the way around the cake, just run your hands around and check that you can't feel any bubbles of air. If you do feel any bubbles, you just need to take a, a small pin or a cocktail stick and just pop them. Don't worry about leaving a little hole because we're going to be covering that up later anyway. Mm -hmm. 